good evening everyone we welcome you all to ortho tv monday motivation webinar series this is the continuation this is the longest series on ortho tv which is continued every monday since april the lockdown i can say that since the lockdown now we have not one but three moderators so dr tushar agarwal who is the convener and uh, we also have dr dhiren ganjwala who is the president of the pediatric orthopedic society of india and we have also with us dr satyan mehta who is the spine surgeon from mumbai so i hand over the proceedings to dr dhiren ganjwala to introduce today's speaker and topic good evening warm welcome to monday motivation program the today's speaker dr taru jindal i will give a brief introduction about her she is a gynecologist practicing it at mumbai she passed out from sion hospital the prestigious institute of mumbai soon after passing out from sion hospital she decided to go to bihar with the mission of improving delivery care in a remote district of bihar she stayed there for one year and after that in the second phase she focused on malnutrition problem which is also one of the biggest challenge in india today she is going to speak about her struggle at bihar while bringing out the change what struggle what obstacles she faced and she is going to tell us about that after spending two years at bihar due to personal health issue she has to return to mumbai but she continued her social work even after returning to mumbai and at present she is working in the field of breastfeeding she is also a author of a book a doctor's experiment in bihar and i have read that book and because of that i can authentically suggest that everyone who wants to bring some change in the life or do something meaningfully uh, meaningfully in life should read it about her accomplishment she is the recipient of karambir chakra award given by the international associations of ngos along with the united nations last year she also received the most inspiring woman of the year award for her valuable contribution in the field of healthcare she was bestowed upon the young achievers award for the outstanding contribution to promote uh, promote breastfeeding she received another international award the award which is youth leader from india in the year 2016 her ted talk 25 or 55 at what age you should start the life of contribution is watched by thousands of viewers worldwide and i again recommend you to see that talk it's really inspiring and particularly those who are young doctors and when they are trying to look for what they need to do in life this is probably the most inspiring talk so monday motivation program is really fortunate to have dr taru jindal with us and with that i hand over to dr jindal thank you welcome madam thanks a lot thanks a lot uh i am uh, extremely honored uh, to be among such an august uh, audience and uh, orthopedicians have always been uh, like these giant <laughs> masculine people <laughs> doing all the uh, heavy work in the hospitals and uh, amazing amazing i really respect all of you currently i'm myself under care of an orthopedician so i know i know the work uh thanks for having me here for monday motivation because i don't know how much motivation that is going to provide to the audience here but i certainly felt incredibly motivated uh revisiting uh, some parts of my own work and the work of my team in bihar so sometimes our own stories can also be inspirational to ourselves right so uh, i will take this talk forward today the help of presentation because as you as you know uh, images make a lot of difference so i have lots of images from bihar and i'll just share the story with the images great i'm sorry yeah so uh i passed out my md uh, gynecology from sain hospital in 2013 so after one year of bond a question really uh, bothered me taru what what next i mean i had spent almost 11 years 
MBBS and then DG and then MD, trying to gather all the best skills in gynecology and obstetrics. And now what? So what did I want to do with the skill set and the tools that I had with me? So around me, I could only see options like settling into a private practice or or uh, joining a corporate hospital or joining a medical college. You know, this is what usually everyone does. Mm -hmm. And lastly, for women like me who, who were married then to have a baby. So <laughs> that was uh, the predominant aim. But somehow uh, I didn't want to do any of that. I mean, for the past few years, what had been just running through my mind was that I'm a Mumbai girl, born and brought up in Bombay, and I had seen every single nook and corner of Bombay, super saturated with doctors. And every time a thought used to come, Taru, do you want to work here? Or do you want to go to the vast expanse of the rural areas of your country, which probably uh, need you much more than Mumbai does? Uh, I did not have much of, a, uh, much of an understanding of rural India because, uh, I hadn't spent much time there, but like over few visits, I had seen, I had got glimpses of some parts of rural India, like Milghat or Gachiroli during my MBBS years. And I was kind of convinced that uh, rural India needs me much more than Mumbai does. And uh, the only question left was, how do I go? Where do I go? <laughs> Through whom do I go? And as it is said, when you truly want something with all your heart, the universe conspires to make it happen. And right then in the last month of my uh, bond period, I heard of a project in Bihar. And this project was being uh, run by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through with the help of uh, two local NGOs, Care India and Doctors for You. So their mandate was uh, to help uh, improve the maternity services in the district hospitals of Bihar. So for this, they wanted uh, gynecologists from different parts of India to go into Bihar and try and help uh, the maternity service. So I said, well, I mean, this is the best. <laughs> I can help teach cesareans and normal deliveries. So uh, I signed up for it. But it wasn't so smooth because the moment everyone heard the word Bihar uh, in my family, everyone freaked out because of movies like this, because everyone had seen gangs of Asipur and uh, Ganga Jal and I don't know what not. And the image of Bihar was very scary in people's minds. In fact, my own teacher told me that Taru, you go very, wherever you want, but don't go to Bihar because in Bihar only three things happen. Either you get raped or you get killed or you get abducted. So these are very strong words to a 30 year old who's just starting off her career. And I just reflected and I thought that even Mumbai, uh, if you think of it, uh, people outside think of it as a place of underworld dawns and gangsters. But in my entire 30 years there, I had never experienced any gangster buzzy. So I said a lot of biases are at play. And uh, my husband was sent along for some protection. And I did go to Bihar and I landed up in this place, Champaran. So um, we all have read about Neil Satyagraha in our history textbooks. And that was all I knew about Champagne. I was a big fan of Gandhiji since my MBBS years. I had read my experiments with food so many times over. And uh, luckily, or whatever you, you, you say, destiny, I was selected for this particular district. So this is my image from the first day in Motihari, which was the district headquarters. So my job there specifically was, I was like a fresh pasta full of energy to train doctors, uh, specifically gynecologists who were double my age, almost 50 years old in cesarean skills. And I was like, how difficult can that be? But uh, I was in for a huge shock. I was told that this was one of the worst performing district hospitals of Bihar, but I was not at all prepared for what I was going to see. The first day when I landed in the district hospital at 11 in the morning, I saw women defecating and urinating just outside the labor room. When I just peeped out, my eyes popped out because this is what I saw. Piles of biomedical waste just dumped outside the window. Needles jutting out of syringes and placenta everywhere. 
it was so foul that it was, I was going to vomit. And this was the largest hospital of the district where people from across the district were supposed to be referred. What next? I see a delivery happening, happening in the labor room and a woman delivers a baby with bare hands. To uh, clean the baby, she uses the mother's sari. She tears the sari and uses that to uh, wipe the baby. Then the baby is wrapped in a petticoat. After that, she sutures the episiotomy in a simple sui dhaga. Then she puts her bare hand inside the uterus to remove the clots. I felt like I was going to faint. And this was 2014, not some uh, bygone era. And I could not understand what was going on there. As I kept spending more and more time in that hospital, I realized this hospital was totally in ruins because doctors were not seen in the maternity system at all. Whenever I asked the sisters where they were, they told me, Now, doctors coming only for cesareans is nothing new because in a lot of uh, remote areas where doctors are few, Doctors being used for high risk specific work is, is normal. But in those cases, the nurses are empowered and they are truly skilled. But in this case, what I was seeing was most of these nurses did not even know how to check blood pressure, how to check the fetal heart rate. And, and, uh, and as, as I've just described, they were letting sweepers deliver the babies. If I found, uh, like through the days, I came to know that these doctors, even in the daytime during the duty hours, were busy in the private practice, which was like flourishing just across the road to the district hospital. So that was just very difficult for me to absorb as a fresh pass out. Uh, as for the infrastructure, the entire delivery room had just four instruments two arteries, one scissor and one needle holder. And they were washing it over and over again and using because their autoclaves and boilers were defunct. They were totally rusted. Uh, as for the medicines, they were not available. So the moment the baby was coming out, uh, they used to send the patients out to buy oxytocin. Uh, it was almost as if uh, we were delivering. I used to wonder why they are calling the patients to deliver in the hospital because probably things will be much more hygienic at home as compared to what they were doing. Uh, I even saw a babe, uh, like I saw mothers being referred out in auto rickshaw. One of them was even with a ruptured uterus. I saw babies who needed urgent uh, resuscitation, not revived because of lack of an ammo bag. I saw babies dying in the womb because the lady doctor on call could not be contacted not picking up the call or busy in private practice. All of this was so traumatic to me. I had come there to be a trainer. And instead, what I was doing was, I was standing there and watching all this. For two weeks, I just watched and I just cried. Every day I cried that I want to leave. I don't want to see this. I want to leave. Finally, finally. Uh, I am so sorry, I forgot to talk to you about this. This is uh, an image in uh, Motihari District Hospital 2014 operation theater. Uh, I completely forgot to uh, mention about the operation theater. You can see that the OT assistant is actually putting stitches on the mother wearing a ganji. And there are 12 people around watching the surgery in their civilian clothes and shoes with even the mother-in-law there. Uh, with this kind of uh, setup, uh, I was faced with the uh, problem, with the with the question of whether to go back or to stay because I was not here to watch all this. So uh, right when I the, the, the thought was coming that let's go back, then my favorite quote came to my mind: "I am only one, but I am still one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something, and I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can." So. I decided to stay. I decided that I have given a three month commitment. I'm going to hang on. Even if it just means cleaning the uh, hospital, I'm going to do it, but I am not going to run away. And this is how I stayed back. I, I actually took a pen and paper and made my strategy for the three months. And 
I uh, kind of divided my strategy into three separate points. First was rapport building because of course I was being seen as a fresh pass out. कि बेटा कहाँ से पढ़ाई किया है क्या क्या ऑपरेशंस किए हैं दिस इज हाउ पीपल वर टॉकिंग टू मी द सेकेंड थिंग दैट वॉज रियली नीडेड वॉज टू इंस्पायर बिकॉज नॉट जस्ट दी ऑपरेशन थिएटर टेबल्स बट इवन देयर ओन स्पिरिट्स had completely rusted in that government system over years so it was very important to just shake them up with some heavy dose of inspiration and third was of course to show that okay i'm good enough to be something who can who can teach you something like i wanted to show my my capability my skills so uh, the first thing i did was in uh, gandhi ji's champaran i thought of invoking him so i spoke to the operation theater staff and said let's have a day of shram dan and shram dan uh, you all know that it means a donation of one's own labor for the sake of a higher good and something from which i don't derive any monetary incentive so uh, i we decided to just get together pull up our uh, jeans and wear gloves and took uh, detergent and literally cleaned all the cobwebs and everything in the operation theater and it was smart, sparkling clean, clean in the next 5 hours and we and we just did jhadu 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 everywhere and at the end of it nobody spoke but i could see something had happened that day next morning when i came his name is dhanno ji he is he was one of the ot assistants in the operation theater and i saw him painting the operation theater table with fresh white paint purchased from his own pocket and when i asked him dhanno ji what are you doing and he said madam aap itni dur se aa sakti hai hamare sath jhadu marne ke liye i can do this much for my hospital this was the first time somebody had even uttered that word my hospital the the sense of ownership that was missing had slowly started to come back after that uh, i'm sorry so after that uh, the next thing left was to show my skills and somehow uh, the, the the moment came uh, there was one delivery in the uh, labor room which was conducted by a sweeper again and she pulled at the uterus and uh, during placental delivery and the uterus was in her hand so they came rushing to me knowing that i am an expert and told me madam something has come out please come me uh, come inside the labor room and i knew what had come out because this is these words are only said when there is a uterine inversion and of course when i went there the sweeper was standing there with the uterus in her hand and the mother in a pool of blood immediately i put on gloves and i put my hand inside almost till my elbow it went inside and i tried compressing the uterus which was just so flabby and i was pressing it with both my hands and of course the patient was in so much pain she started to kick me then there was a relative there she thought i was hurting the hurting her daughter in law because she had never seen anything like that and she started to pull me away and there was a third dog trying to get in between my legs so it was like a tug of war going on in that very critical moment but i could not let her go because these were my only tools of support because as i said there were no medicines there they, and literally they did not even know how to put a cannula so uh, i stood like that with two my my hands inside for 45 minutes and they had started to just go limp and i thought before the patient i am going to collapse but god saved me within a few minutes the uterus started to contract and the bleeding stopped that day i knew i had saved not just the patient but lives of lives and careers of many many staff there after that of course uh, this news spread that this doctor young doctor had saved this patient with her two hands and then everyone came to show their cooperation and to uh, to just you know reach out and that's how we started a series of trainings and of course starting with very elementary things like uh, fetal heart rate or blood pressure measurement or sterilization or all of this stuff uh 
uh, we stuck, of course, for the operation theater, we stuck this boldly outside that you're not supposed to enter. It's not a routine room, but it wasn't easy, actually. Uh, I and uh, my team, we literally stood outside the operation theater with a cap, mask, and chappals. So you can see these were our tools of change, really. And we did not allow anyone to go inside. Uh, the, the worst ones, or I should say the most difficult ones to convince were doctors because uh, one of the anesthetists even told me, uh, why should we wear this? We have medical college. Mein kabhi pehna nahi hai. It was such a tough task. But uh, a day came within, I think, three months of every day standing at the door and convincing people that this scene got converted to this. It didn't take more than three months. And this was such a big news for that district that it got advertised in the newspapers next morning because they had never probably seen anything like that. So uh, as for the labor room, we uh, taught them how to make uh, sanitary pads. Uh, this was this is uh, Vijay Jha. He was the hospital manager there. and He was an extremely inspired person, but just did not have the direction he needed, you know, to make change. This direction has to come from the leaders in the hospital. And a leader in any hospital is the doctor. If the doctor is missing, the doc the hospital is just going to go haywire, just as what we saw. He gave me keys to the storeroom. When I opened it, I saw every single thing available, dozens of delivery sets. Nobody had bothered to just bring them out into the labor room because that needs supervision and accountability, which they did not want. And this is what we did. We simply got the stuff out and things started to roll. Things started to roll. A lot of times we think that facilities are the problems in rural areas, but I would say money, funds, facilities are not the problem because government has really poured in money, but we somehow don't want to use it. As for the sweepers, they did not need to deliver anymore because they had plenty of cleaning of cleaning stuff to do because I always had the jhadu in my hand. So uh, all of this happened in just three to four months. Right then, another miracle happened. Uh, his name is Doc, uh, his name is Mr. Jitendra Shivastav. He was the new collector of Motihari. He was sent right when I was there. And he came to know something is happening in the hospital. And he actually called me in his office to ask what is going on. So I made a PowerPoint presentation to him, literally with all the uh, what can be done, solutions, problems. And he said, yes, I will take it on. And he came along with me to the district hospital and literally, you know, his daughters, he used to take uh, rounds at 1.30 a.m. at night. And his th this thing of being watched for the first time in the history of this hospital, everyone, you know, straightened out and uh, things just moved at just such a fast pace. And pace. He ordered reconstruction of the operation theater and the OTs, uh, sorry, and the delivery rooms and uh, toilets were constructed. It was like a new hospital. People had said what had not happened in decades had happened in under one year. So it was like a massive coordinated effort between the hospital staff, between the NGO people, like I belong to the NGO world and the collector from the administration side. Usually everyone works in silos, in uh, you know separate spaces, no one coordinates, but this was probably one story when everyone came together and scripted history. This hospital, which was once known as one of the worst performing hospitals in Bihar in 2015, won the Kaya Kalp Award. So Kaya Kalp Award was announced by the Modi government under the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. And it was like a nationwide uh, competition of district hospitals where uh, they were you know, assessed on various parameters from sanitation, hygiene protocols, a lot of things. So in 2015, the very first award in Bihar, Motihari District Hospital won. And not just in 2015, it won again in 2018. It is the only district hospital now to get the quality assurance certificate from the government of Bihar. Now, this was big news. And uh, for me, it was like the first project after MD. To know that 
change is so fast because what we have usually heard is ek generation beej boti hai dusri generation pani dalti hai teesri generation ko harvest milta hai so change is like so long and so difficult but what i saw was change had come about in a recently in a in a uh, short time the second thing i saw was it doesn't take much to create change it just needs a leader you know sometimes you just need one spark and the fire catches on so a lot of people from within the system are willing to change what had happened had happened because of the people within the system i was probably just one of the catalyst there who was just doing this spark probably providing the spark but they lighted right i probably lighted the spark but they lighted and they did the work so uh, it was a huge message to me that uh, my presence can bring about change that one spark that that one little contribution in a far off land has led to something so beautiful so uh, it kind of vindicated my decision to be there of course then uh, there was uh, i had to return to bombay i became a lecturer in sevagram medical college along with my husband but every single day there was this itch taru wapas jana hai wapas jana hai bihar wapas jana hai because every single day i felt my time in bihar means much more right now than my time here because here if i am not there someone else will come but if i don't go there nobody else will go and thanks to my husband support he said yeah go go ahead go ahead and this time i went alone and this time i went uh, to a rem- remote village in patna district called uh, masarli even though it was in patna district just 25 kilometers away there were no roads for uh, 8 kilometers around the village so we had to go through the fields and uh, my job here was to uh, build a health center right in the heart of the village because the village had a lot of malnutrition childhood mal- malnutrition and women were delivering at home i couldn't believe in today's era people delivered at home so this is what we did dr ravikant singh a lot of you might not might, might might be knowing about him these days for covid doctors for you is doing phenomenal work so dr ravikant singh from kem mumbai he this is his ancestral village and this is his bungalow so he uh, kind of started this project to convert this bungalow into a health center to provide 24 by 7 maternity and child health services and this was the labor room that i made inside the kitchen there i was the project head but i was the only one i did not have any other qualified person with me because nobody was ready to kind of go to such an interior area so we uh, mobilized local people from within the village to someone became the pharmacist someone became the uh, uh, the staff in the hospital in the opd so uh, as i said it was such a beautiful and uh, infrastructurally perfect labor room but i sat there for one month with this nobody came for deliveries i kept hearing that people are delivering at home why is nobody coming so that's when i decided in the morning time before the opd i will go and talk to them what is going on why are they not coming what do they think and that's when i came to know these people think that what is the need to go to a hospital when a uh, baby is moving everything is fine so the sign of fetal viability was baby movement and only after delivery it will be known whether the baby is fine or not i couldn't believe it so we always have some other thoughts in the mind when we go and do some intervention like i thought facilities is a problem but definitely not their thoughts was a problem so something had to be done about that uh, so uh, i thought of a uh, intervention samohik god bharai because in maharashtra i had seen this beautiful baby showers happening with the mothers being decorated with flowers and all this never happens this was not a culture of bihar and for them it was new so i announced a god bharai and almost 150 pregnant women turned up in the hospital that day so we had a lot of uh, song and dance and uh, celebration of their customs and we even gifted them this gift kit with a sari so i knew they had come along because of the sari but it still gave me the chance to you know kind of you know just to send some messages of importance of pregnancy care and importance of hospital delivery and guess what 
immediately afterwards we had 80 out of 150 half of them registered with us and the antenatal opd started to roll finally they trusted us and a delivery happened this was another incentive for the deliveries uh, baby kapde bachon ke kapde which were uh, stitched by the local women uh, the second reason i was there was malnutrition being a gynecologist i had never come across malnutrition but i couldn't say that i am a gynec i am not going to work in pediatrics uh, it was time to read up and i read up and i discussed stuff with a lot of my colleagues and started the malnutrition program i couldn't believe that this in existed in my country so we uh, set up village screening posts and uh, literally in very innovative ways under trees and in huts learned to uh, learned to diagnose malnutrition uh, almost to the rate of 50 to 52 percent in the village uh, the first thing i did was started some community farming because these people uh, i thought how much medication can i give uh, these people were farmers who bring our food, right? Our food comes from Bihar, uh, UP and uh, um, Haryana, uh, Punjab. But these people themselves did not eat much vegetables and fruit. So I thought of asking uh, for land from Rajputs. And they did give me a part of their land. And in the morning time, we used to do farming there with the villagers, thinking that I would have all this vegetables to give to the mother's children in the OPDs and not just medicines. Uh, this is a case I'd like to present of this little child. She's five years old, just weighing five kg, weight of probably a three or four month year old child. And this is what she became in another two and a half months. Uh, thanks to uh, a lot of tender loving care, a lot of nutritional support. And we even made a toy room for her in the hospital so that she could have some uh, emotional stimulation. So this was like a Kaya cult for me, you know. Uh, and there was no one to give me an award or a, a team on award this time. But, but uh, seeing her walk for the first time in the hospital, the, her first steps in the hospital, I felt like this is real transformation. This is another girl. Uh, within day six, this is a transformation. Can you can you even uh, believe that this is the same child who came to us? And this transformation is just about just about six days. The the third thing was I needed skilled people with me. There was no one. So and we have already discussed the status of qualified nurses there. So I created a, a nurse assistant program in which the uh, housewives of the villages were invited to become nurse assistants in about six months time these women who had never stepped out of their of their villages and put their palus out and looked out of their palus were now taking blood pressure measurement and taking village talks on scorpion bites and these women are today working there because that hospital has now become a COVID hospital in patna and these girls are now the main nurse assistants there. Of course, nothing works without rapport building and connect. We used to have lots of uh, uh, community connect interventions like Holy Milan or uh, celebrating Republic Day or uh, Independence Day. So, uh, so all of this happened in just a span of two years, and I felt like a rush that you know probably scaling the. Uh, Himalayas would feel to some youngsters and I felt this was just just like that and I had thought of committing my life to Bihar but in 2016 I was struck with a hypothalamic tumor and slowly I started losing all my hormones and developed panhypopituitarism so I was forced to leave Bihar and I came back to Bombay uh, for treatment and ever since since 2016 and now it's 20 I'm still on chemotherapy. I have just finished my 15th month of chemotherapy cycles. Uh, sometimes uh, it just it just felt like a cruel twist of fate. Uh, why did this happen when everything was going right? Not just for me, but even for the community. Then uh, the only time when I could not get up from the bed or was was even being breathless to go to the toilet. Uh, the only one thing that gave me peace was I did my bit and I did it in time because 
a lot of times uh, young people are told that uh, pehle settle ho jao get settled first get married have children have a bank balance have a good practice in case of doctors so uh, probably ye sab hone ke baad sochna contribution ke bare mein uh, in my case i i would have waited probably uh, that time would have never come today i don't have the physique or the stamina to do all this i'm glad that the first project after my md was bihar and i did not wait even though there were so many questions and doubts being raised around one thing i i understood that time to create something beautiful is today is now rural areas really need us it's like a marathon we uh, for a for someone to win Uh, so uh, sorry it's like a relay race for someone to win a relay race all four runners have to run fast even if one or two run slowly the team still loses india cannot run ahead with just delhi bombay calcutta chennai in mind we have to take the rural areas along along and you have seen today this is the india of 20th century 21st century uh, second decade it's just a big story hai can we run ahead leaving these people where they are there are lots more so children and women there and uh, you don't have to spend your whole life in rural areas because that's technically not possible but in my story the only thing i want to share is significant change could be created in just a span of 2 years because i provided my Uh, leadership or my direction or my ideas to that place and those people did it i didn't do it so can we use our core skills to contribute something meaningful to certain rural areas of our country bihar jharkhand uttar pradesh uttarakhand assam odisha right just one year and the time is now when we are young when we are fresh passionate full of energy right and not you know the cynicism has not Uh, seeped into our brains and the arthritis hasn't just crippled our knees not just our knees but not uh, arthritis has not just crippled our knees but also our brains so i'm glad i did it in time uh i'll just like to leave uh, with this thought the best moments in your lives are not the passive times of relaxation the best moments occur if your mind or your body is stretched to its limits in an effort to accomplish something that is challenging and worthwhile so uh in this last four years when i have been in lockdown since four years uh i wrote uh, a book on bihar uh, describing whatever i described in the last half an hour i've described in 300 pages in total detail uh in english it's called a doctor's experiments in bihar and it's also translated in marathi ha ye mumkin hai it is got published this year uh those of you who feel interested to read more please do read it's freely available online jai hind yeah thank you very much dr taru it was really a inspiring story and that's a real life story a lot of stories we read or like we see in the movie but when we see in the real life that really makes us very happy and very uh, inspiring now i would like to ask you uh, one simple question the lot of qualities which you required in bihar are not given to us as a doctor yeah. so because you need a lot of leadership uh, quality over there when you were trying to do something new so yeah. uh, what do you think about that what are the qualities which are not taught in the medical school but still you required over there very true sir uh, i think we just uh, we are not at all taught to be social doctors first of all because uh, we are taught psm but we are taught it in uh, we are taught psm in such a useless way without any connect with the community uh, i think if public health and psm is taught in a better way we would realize our role as social doctors so uh, that part of my life was fulfilled by certain student organizations that really helped me open my eyes the exposure that i got in my undergrad was was uh, i think critical in this decision of going to bihar because there was an organization called prachiti in bijay medical college 
where I had got admission in the first round. So they uh, used to arrange these visits to Anandvan, Baba Amte's Anandvan, or Dr. Abhay Bang's Gachiroli. So just a visit to those places for two weeks just turned my mind around and gave me an exposure to a different kind of future as a doctor. Otherwise, I would have also probably done uh, uh, done the gone the conventional way. There is nothing wrong with that, but. Uh, but as I said, just one year also makes a difference. So uh, this thought can only come if we have got that exposure. That is, I think, missing, hugely missing in our uh, in our medical system. Exposure to the outside world. We are just limited to clinics. The second thing I feel is uh, a lot more skills are required for a doctor other than just surgery or maybe medical skills. Being a leader is a huge uh, being a leader and a trans, uh, uh, someone who can uh, spark a change maker is also a role of the doctor. Like when I was doing the community farming and doing the hal chala rahi thi pe, so people told me, Taru, are you a farmer? Why are you doing all this? I said, I am not a farmer, but if I have to do farming to, uh, to kind of build trapo there and to kind of instill this thing in their minds that nutrition is related to their children being so thin because this association they were not seeing if that is required i will do that also so someone who can innovate on the ground who can join people and become become a leader on the ground you know these skills are not taught to us uh, i don't know i probably it came in me because I was a school captain when I was in school. Uh, so I had learned all this in school. But uh, yeah, hugely, I think, uh, huge, very narrow uh, medical system and medical education system. Uh, before I hand over to Satyan for asking a question, uh, just small questions. Uh, were you greedy or resilient from the beginning or Actually, your visit to Bihar made you resilient. Yeah. So, uh, I think my resilience, I was uh, incredibly anxious, uh, prone to depression, uh, prone to panic kind of person. And uh, when I went there, I was almost forced to grow up. I could not react. Like, I, like one example could be that I, in that village Masari, a uh, baby was stuck and I had to deliver that baby with forceps. Uh, and it was a difficult forceps. Of course, there were some injuries. Uh, the, the village just blew up because they had never seen forceps delivery. And they said that doctor ne sir for dia. And everyone in the team collapsed because these were young people, average age of 25 to 30. And these people said, hum log apna ghar ke pe baithe hai, garmi mein. And these people are saying this. So uh, I was also 30, 31 at that time. I was almost forced to uh, not respond and not react and absorb that. Uh, almost, I can say it was a huge insult. People were coming to break the hospital. Uh, at that time, I was, I think uh, I learned better. I learned to respond better. And what really helped at that time was the stories of uh, people I have heard, I had heard in my undergrad. I knew there was a time when Dr. Abhay Bang and Dr. Rani Bang were working in a village for a long time. Then one day for something, the, the same villagers threw stones at them. So I had heard these stories. At that time, it probably didn't mean much to me. But in Bihar, in that day, in that story came. And then I learned to respond better. So I think in the last decade or so, uh, not even decade, I think five years, I must have matured a lot. I must have become more resilient and less prone to uh, impulse uh, like a youngster. Yeah, over to you, Satyan, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, so, madam, uh, very inspiring uh, stories that we are hearing from you. Uh, since you were on this topic on uh, how uh, the villagers were out to get you and uh, can you well, let's let's continue on that uh, what is yeah. the best way to deal with uh, an angry patient or an angry mob at this stage you know when they are not as educated and it's difficult to explain to them so what did how did you deal with them yeah. and what what are your tips 
yeah so uh, after we had made all the efforts to kind of build rapport and earn their trust because initially they thought main missionary se aayi hu ya i am there to help them something like that but finally when they had started to respond this thing happened and that night of course we had to save ourselves and uh, the hospital the, the the mob was diffused but after that it was incredibly hurtful to me for some time and to the team as well so we just uh, you know thoda time just hum shanti se kuch nahi kar rahe the hum log just shant rahe we were uh, allowing the flames to settle down but it was important to reignite that uh, uh, or kind of reform the trust that had been lost so again a lot of new interventions were started so at that time i spent time in my nurse assistant program so i st- I, i shifted my focus from the malnutrition program and the pregnancies and the deliveries so yes that entire thing stopped because of this event but then i shifted my focus and more importantly the focus of the team their energies had to be utilized otherwise the whole day they were sitting and talking kya kiya ye gaon walon ne hamare sath so their energies were shifted to the nurse assistant program and we uh, kind of went into a more creative role so we started making modules for uh, in literally in bihari for anyone who would like to become a nurse assistant in in 6 months so uh, this kind of you know uh, diversion probably that helped diversion, diversion into another creative activity helped to kind of uh, let the flames settle for some time second was when the villagers saw that i was still there i had not run away i was still there and i was still going to my morning visits uh before the opd and i was still talking to the villagers kya hua aap log kyun mujhse pareshan ho koi baat nahi mujhe maaf kar do main hurt nahi karna cha rahi thi bacche ko bachane ke liye kiya tha so dheere 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 sorry bhi bolna pada mujhe par resilience resilience and commitment yeah that i am still there this is what they saw and uh, whatever i had done even if it was wrong in their eyes i had done it for them so uh please turn around uh madam uh, we uh, you know continuing in this same line uh, we usually have a lot of issues in uh, uh, encouraging or motivating uh, the you know class 3 class 4 workers and that kind yeah. of workers uh, in our setup whether even you know depending even if you're paying them very well to people in the government hospitals uh, how do you motiv- what are the tips how do you motivate them yeah i think the greatest thing that uh, really helped me in both the motihari and masadi projects was the third and the fourth grade if i can call uh, workers were my first uh, what were my first uh, army they were the first soldiers in my army the doctors and nurses came around much later the clerks the sweepers the security guards the chai wala these were the people who were in my team first and and once they come in you know uh, they they know how to spread the word and the doctors the elite staff came on later so how i did that was the only thing a third uh, uh, third grade or fourth grade staff wants is respect so i i showed the image of the, the sweeper doing pocha on the walls so this was the same sweeper who was not ready to do anything but first thing when they saw i take up the jhadu in my hand when i had uh, stepped down from my pedestal i am a doctor and come at their level and did their job with them cleaning the stool with them then they thought are ye doctor to hamare jaisi hai secondly i used to sit and have snacks and samosa and chai with them so i completely dissolved the boundaries between me and the and the third and the fourth graders second uh, as i said they just need some respect and love every day simply coming and wishing them kaise hain aap and just spending time with them so this kind of transform they did not need any other incentive other than love and respect and once they started feeling that they are of my uh, category uh so they automatically started doing things on their own wo mujhe roz aake batate the madam dekhiye aapka labor room chamka diya hai humne they weren't getting any extra money for that 
but they did it for me they did it for me because i gave them something that they had never got there so this this feeling of being human or um, ki main bhi kuch kar sakti hu main achhi hu like gandhi ji always says there is a divine spark in everyone it just needs to be recognized and lighted so i used to believe in that and wo divine spark unhone khud hi dekh liya apne mein yeah and you were inspiring them by leading by example as well i guess yes. uh, sir you wanted to ask yeah uh, there is one personal question like uh, you learn something at bihar and how those things help you in your personal challenge of fighting against a cancer or the tumor which you are facing at this stage so do you yeah. think that that has really helped you to for this challenge so uh, definitely sir this is much harder this is much harder uh, no matter what i did in bihar a lot of times uh, just dealing with my own uh, ill health and the fact that it just goes on and on and on it doesn't just doesn't end so uh, i have lost uh, motivation a lot of times uh, to do the right thing here and the resilience that i showed for the community is sometimes not there for myself so uh, sometimes a question comes that how come i can stand up for the community but i can't stand up for myself uh yeah i'm still learning i'm still learning madam i would uh, suggest that you watch our monday motivation program <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely please sir yeah and uh, i'm i'm sure you'll do well in your personal life as well just uh, keep you. leading by example in, in this as well Thank i'm you. sure you'll do well uh taking ahead uh, the questions uh, so you know for any person now you have you i you know thousands of people watch uh, watch this uh, program and lots will be inspired and uh, we already have a lot of uh, surgeons who do work in rural areas gachiroli uh, yeah. is one of the spine surgeons here who does a lot of work there with his team yeah. Uh, yeah. so uh, for anybody who is now starting to go there and who wants to go what do you tell them what pointers will you give them what to expect what are the challenges that one would face and how to prepare for it yeah so uh, first of all uh, i would say that uh, you are uh, you are asking a question that specific to someone who's already become a doctor but i would say uh, generally if you have a sister or a brother or a child who is doing medicine who is doing mbbs it would be very important to expose them to the real india and not just uh, restrict them to ideas of uh, the corporates and the private practice and the hospitals the world beyond the hospital so a uh, lot of student organizations these days are doing this work of exposing medical students like in molana azad medical college there is gurukul so they are exposing students through that in bj medical college it was prachiti and now in maharashtra we have another youth movement called as nirman or seva ankur these groups expose young minds to the realities or and and to inspiring people like the bangs or um, jan swasthya sahyog in baniari jagat so even small trips can get the mind thinking why why and why not so this this question would be important and later on even if they settle in the conventional roles of private practice and nothing wrong with that but their orientation will be hugely different one more way is uh, also to give a certain part of your usual uh, career and give it to rural areas like for example later on uh, after coming back from bihar i could not go in live there forever but then i was a part of the surgical team that goes to gadchiroli to operate at dr bang hospital so i used to see a lot of pediatric surgeons spine surgeons and a lot of people come there and they used to spend four days in the marathon surgical uh, camp and do do like 150 surgeries in three days so these things are life changing for those people people who have had hydrocele for 20 years one day in one day it's gone so this is also a way of contribution so first of all i would say exposure expose yourself or your relative to the rural india or to the real india i would say and second is 
there are lots of organizations that need our skills let us find a way to to segregate some time of our lives and spend that uh, one month every year or or five days every six months or two years in your uh, post mp life so some way to give your time and uh, exposure i think is enough because your heart beats everyone's heart beats hearts beat so uh, your hearts will respond to that madam uh, taking this ahead if you want to give an incentive to the youngsters to do this uh, how what, this experience uh, in uh, working in rural or real india uh, how would that help them in private practice let let let's give them that incentive okay so if you're talking about incentive uh, we we have bonds right we have rural bonds like in maharashtra we have a one year bond after md but nobody wants to do it because it is sold in such a bad way that if you don't do it you have to give 50 lakhs and uh, it's like a danda on your head nobody wants to do this but the same thing when i did voluntarily in bihar it was so beautiful so i think the stories need to be packaged better we need more people who have worked in rural areas and not just rural any area of unmet need to document their stories even if they are of one month it's okay to document those stories beautifully and sell them to the young minds the reason i have written this book is because i want that third year mbbs or that second year dental or any ayurvedic or or for that matter even an iit and to know that i had a rocking time in bihar my life rocked there uh, it was as adventurous as, as scaling the himalayas or going on a road trip to leh ladakh right so i wanted to show it as a uh, as a rock star moment you know the language that this generation understands the facebook insta generation so Uh, it's not packaged beautifully so this is what i feel it just looks like a saga of suffering and pain which it is not it is a huge adventure so uh, the the incentive actually they don't need any monetary incentive the only incentive uh, to them is man it's a adventure of a lifetime uh, we have all read motorcycle diaries by che guevara he was an intern and he spent one year going on a motorcycle around south america and he became the che guevara that we know about so uh, the incentive can never be monetary the incentive is if it is an adventure or not is it i mean is it going to rock my life so it does rural service rocks your life yeah so what you're trying to say is like an adventure it's going to be a great experience okay. which you wouldn't get uh, otherwise at all Yeah, great to hear, Madam. Uh, I, I guess so. Dean <laughs> uh, sir, do you want to ask anything? So oh, just uh, one uh, question is like, how was your life like? So day to day activity all throughout the day, uh, like you start your work at nine o'clock, but usually I think by one or two it it must be over, and then how do you spend your rest of the day with uh, yeah. not the facility which we have in Mumbai? like the air condition and all that how you used to pass your time yes so uh, definitely uh, in masadi at least it was very difficult because i was used to the internet i was used to a different life uh, but one of my mentors had told me in when i was in second year mbbs uh, as a part of the seva ankur program that a, that if you want to serve one day will come when for 12 months for one whole year you will not get to see the movie theater you should prepare yourself for that day and i heard this second year mbbs and that day came the theater was like we we couldn't uh, reach the roads for 8 kilometers forget about the theater and i'm glad i spent one year in second year mbbs not going to a theater to prepare myself ek din wo bhi aaya and preparation helped first of all knowing my priorities early on in life so suddenly i didn't have to do dramatic preparation and dramatic adjustments to the environment because i was already living that kind of life back in bombay when i was doing my md or my mbbs i say my lifestyle was dramatically different from others 
सो दैट हैड कम बिकॉज ऑफ द प्लानिंग आई न्यू कि गाँव में जाके काम करना है इतना तो मालूम था तो क्या मैं एवरी टाइम मॉल जा सकती हूँ क्या मैं जाके बहुत कपड़े खरीद सकती हूँ प्रेपरेशन करना है इसीलिए नहीं करूंगी सो समेर आई एंड माई पार्टनर हु वॉज माई बॉयफ्रेंड एट दैट टाइम बोथ ऑफ अस वर काइंड ऑफ प्रिपेयर टू लिव अ थोड़ा सा लाइफ ऑफ अ मॉन्क सो प्रेपरेशन हेल्प मी सेकेंड वॉज द टेस्ट द टेस्ट ऑफ वॉट आई वॉज गेटिंग even in masadi i did not miss it because i did not have it of course later on we got tv and internet also i used to simply go out in the fields and sit there and i used to see the farmers and start talking to them so the taste of this cannot compare to the taste of going to coffee cafe coffee day right so mere taste hi nahi the wo to iska jo beauty mujhe experience ho raha tha that I didn't miss anything. I mean, I just wanted to live my whole life there, but I couldn't. Great, great. To to all the youngsters who are watching this, I would say now Jio has <laughs> got their services everywhere, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll get internet anywhere that you yeah. go. So don't worry, you can still uh, do your Netflixing when you're doing your Rudal services. So, Madam. So, uh, one thing I like to add, yeah. like in the OPDs. the love of the villagers they used to just make any loneliness go away because yes. so sometimes these women will come ki ek papita leke aate the apne village se ya kuch bhutta leke aate the to these small acts of love used to just yeah. make any loneliness or sadness right so madam uh, we'll conclude our uh, meeting today uh want to thank you very much for uh, gracing us with your presence uh, your talk has been very inspirational uh, it's been a, a, a very different talk uh, and a very different topic from uh, what all uh, from what we've been uh, you know doing on a week to week basis and i'm sure a lot of people would be inspired by what you have said uh, young to old people and a few points which you gave like uh, were very you know really touched my heart uh, first of all you said that you know the time is now to do it you cannot say that i will wait till say retirement or in covid times you see you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so if you want to do something you got to do it now uh, and uh, you know can't wait till you are uh, you know 70 plus and maybe not even physically able to do it so do that now now is the time uh, for uh, a very nice point which you said is for any person class t4 workers anybody everybody wants to be given love and respect and if you do that then uh, they will follow you you lead them by example you uh, you know they see how you are behaving and if you are, you continue to do in the particular way in in the, in the way they get inspired people around you get inspired we ourselves mm-hmm. hope that a lot of people uh, would be watching monday motivation and get inspired by by what we are doing and uh, maybe do more and get, and it helps them uh, a very important point again was that you know india is not just a major city is not just uh, delhi bombay ahmedabad uh, kolkata bangalore chennai but it is the uh, heartlands and if india needs to go ahead we all need to go forward we need to go ahead together and it would be actually beneficial for everyone i mean we feel ke uh you know it, economically if they are better uh, financially better physically better it helps not just them it helps the entire country so everybody's uh, yeah. uh, work improves and the infrastructure comes up so uh, madam i want to thank you once again uh, for uh, coming here and giving us uh, such uh, beautiful uh, pearls and uh, give, i hope a lot of people are inspired by this uh i want to thank uh, uh, my uh, senior co panelist uh, uh, dheeran sir uh, for uh, you know continuing to lead us in uh, monday motivation uh, tushar dr tushar agarwal is not here he is uh, not been feeling so well i hope he recovers soon and can uh, uh, come in and give his uh, pointers uh, thank you to neeraj ashok uh, and ortho tv for this and most importantly thank you to all our viewers uh, for monday motivation uh, where we have uh, you know gradually been growing and now we are getting thousands of views for every uh, episode and i hope to uh, keep getting uh, 
more and more topics, uh, more different topics to everyone and uh, keep motivating them. So again, with uh, good wishes to you, madam, uh, I bid you a good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.